Hey everyone, welcome back to your favorite kick-ass fitness channel. Today I'm gonna tell you about how you can eat like a pudgy little piggy over the holidays and still maintain your fitness progress. Before I start, remember that hitting the like and subscribe button is way easier than resisting that scrumptious eggnog on Christmas Eve. So hit the like and subscribe and let's get started. Now the first tip I'll give you is to just dig in for special occasions. Don't deprive yourself over the holidays. You do not need to test your willpower every minute of every single day of your life. And you don't need to ruin the fun of your holiday parties by stressing out about calories and macronutrients. Life's too short to feel ashamed and guilty over food, so dig in. At holiday gatherings, just indulge, try new things, eat whatever you want, even if you resemble a little porky piggy by the end of it. You worked hard all year, so you earned it. However, consider something else. Most people take some extra time off of work between Christmas and New Year's, you know, beyond just the holidays themselves. So when you're home from work, but you're not at a gathering or party or any special occasion, don't make all day, every day into one massive holiday party from Christmas all the way through New Year's. Okay, when you're just you know at home on a regular day off from work, maintain your normal fitness and nutrition routine. So basically, uh, you stay on track while you're just on your own there at home so that you can just indulge however much you want at those special occasions. Okay, so special occasions are extra special, but your normal time you know, on your own at home is just your normal time to yourself or you'd try to maintain your normal routine as much as possible. So that way you have the balance, you have the best of both worlds, you have some consistency and normalcy, and then you have the ability to just dig in and go all out for the holidays too. All right? And then the second tip is to be selective. So I know I just said to dig in and try all the different foods, but you can still be selective while indulging. So selective indulgence. For example, taking the leaner cuts of meat instead of the fattier ones is a great way to do that. Also, like really um, prioritize if you're at something like a potluck or buffet where there are a ton of different dishes. Don't get all FOMO, you know, fear of missing out because you didn't try every single little thing. If you see a dish and you're not really sure if you'd like it, so-so, I mean, you can try maybe a little bite of it just to see uh, if you do like it or not, but, you know, don't let that FOMO, fear of missing out, get to you. You know, if you think that you might not like something, just feel free to leave it alone so you can save your precious stomach space for the foods that really are the most delicious and really make that holiday occasion extra special. Okay, so really um, prioritize what you really want to eat versus what you're not sure if you'd even like or not. Don't want to fill up on um, foodstuffs and snacks that were only mediocre for you, yet you get your belly all bulging. So yeah, really prioritize. Eat the most delicious food and you know let your holiday occasions stay special. Uh, something else to consider is that the holidays often involve a lot of alcohol and drinking. So you know, anytime it comes to alcohol drinking, just stay safe, know your limits, and stick with them. Um, from a fitness perspective, you know, alcoholic drinks have a lot of calories, are very calorie dense, so that can give you a big belly bulge, even if you don't indulge in food all that much. That's something to consider, not going overboard in that regard. So. Yeah, just stick to your normal limits, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, don't feel peer pressured by others to go beyond that or to start drinking if it's not something that you normally do. So just you know, respect your own limits and boundaries. All right, and then uh, our third tip from the fitness perspective, because we talked about nutrition before. If you're traveling, make yourself a list of good compact body weight workouts that you can do in small spaces and don't require any extra equipment. So on my channel, I have a couple of ideas in that regard, especially for core strength and pull up bar workouts that can be done at home. But as of now, as of December 2021, this channel is still fairly new, so I haven't gotten a chance to post a whole lot of my favorite 
compact body weight workouts, but I will in the future, which is why you should subscribe. <laughs> but yeah, for now, some ways to get ideas for good compact body weight workouts. So one thing you could research um, body weight CrossFit wads. They'll give you a lot of good ideas and just select something that fits with the kind of environment that you have. And then otherwise just be creative, make yourself like a good circuit training workout with like five to eight different exercises that are compound and involve all the major muscle groups and work your full body. So some examples of exercises you can use for that type of circuit training, things like push-ups and all their variations, sit-ups, leg lifts, V-ups, and the hundreds of variations of those. Also, uh, things like bodyweight squats and pistol squats, handstands, even if you don't have a freestanding free -standing handstand yet. You know, handstands against the wall are still a great way to work those shoulders and core. So handstands, handstands, push-ups, presses, and all the variations of those because there are a lot. And maybe things like plyometrics and jump roping, depending on the kind of area that you have. So there are a lot of good ideas for body weight workouts if you just do some research for that. So a door gym pull-up bar is a great investment because you can keep it either at your house or you can take it with you if you're traveling because most of them are pretty easily collapsible. So you can just unscrew it, pack it up, and then quickly only take a few minutes to reassemble when you get to your destination. So a pull-up bar really opens up a ton of possibilities for at-home compact workouts. You can do basically any bar pulling movement. So pull-ups, toes to bar, leg raises, all of those. All right. And while we're talking about compact workouts that travel with you. My fourth tip for you is to incorporate running. Running is an excellent timeless workout, especially sprinting, because sprinting can even be done in a backyard or large living rooms back and forth. And sprinting is actually an amazing full body workout. We usually think of it as being just a lower body leg day type workout, but actually it works not only your legs and glutes, it works your core to a very large extent because you really need to keep your core tight to stabilize your hips and spine. And just as well, it trains your shoulders, chest, and biceps for that arm swing. Because for sprinting, you do need to swing your arms a ton harder than you do for jogging. So you'll really feel it in those upper body muscles if you're really going full out max intensity with your sprints. In addition, sprints train your fast twitch muscle fibers, so those lean muscles that we use to build strength. Excellent for that. They also challenge your cardiorespiratory system. They can increase your VO2 max by a whole lot. They're extremely effective in that regard. And sprinting can be done in either short or longer lengths. So a short sprints that are less than 10 seconds, they challenge your phosphagen system, which is what powers your body through those short durations, max effort, one and done types of workout. So sprinting, also things like power lifting and Olympic lifting and tumbling passes and gymnastics or leap passes and dance or anything like that that's just really one and done. Max effort is the phosphagen system and you train that really well with sprints that take less than 10 seconds but are full out max speed. And the glycolysis system is what we use to power our body through durations that are a bit longer, like 30 seconds to about two to three minutes. So uh, longer sprints that are about 200 to 400 meters in length are great for that, as are those suicide runs, so where you run back and forth. Those are excellent for working out that system. So uh, sprinting is pretty versatile. You can even do it in interval workouts. You can get extremely creative with sprinting actually. So it is worth doing some research on that and just picking some sprint workouts or sprint interval training workouts that really fit your fitness goals and the type of setting that you have. All right, so while we're talking about running, my fifth tip is to incorporate distance running as long as you have access to either a 
sidewalk where it's safe to run or a park or a treadmill, distance running is a great go-to. If you do feel guilty about overindulging at some of those parties, well, you can make yourself feel a little better about it mentally by going for a good run. So, just if you're gonna run outside, just make sure weather permits. Uh, you know, don't go outside if it's really freezing cold, snowing or raining. Check you know, safety first. Check that there is no ice or snow to slip on. So really outdoor distance running around the winter holidays. It works the best for folks who live in areas that do not get frozen over in the winter. So yeah, just always be safe and check that the weather permits. Well, um, if you want to learn more about those metabolic pathways that I mentioned, like the phosphagen, glycolysis, and aerobic system, I attached a link to a good, simple, straightforward article about it in the description below. So you can click on that if you want to learn about the different metabolic energy systems that you can train by running at different lengths and speeds. Okay, and then the sixth tip I have for you is to stretch. So. The holidays are a great time actually to focus more on flexibility and mobility goals because flexibility type workouts generally don't take much space or any extra equipment. So this is actually a great time to focus on different types of goals because flexibility is an extremely important yet highly overlooked aspect of adult fitness. But having flexibility will make it a lot easier for you to do many other exercises like those toes to bar on the bars that make you have to pike, you know, fold yourself in. So flexibility will help for that. Things like the um, Olympic lifts, you need to have some good mobility to those snatches, cleans, clean and jerks, uh, weightlifting. Also any sport that you're training, all sports require some good mobility. So. Um, while you don't have access to your regular gym and workout space, you could actually use that to your advantage by making yourself focus on the flexibility and mobility training, which is so often overlooked. Okay, and my seventh tip for you is to relax and recover. So sometimes it is good to have a forced break from your workout routine because that just makes you have to relax recover, let your body you know, repair itself, let all those recovery mechanisms do their work. And also you can focus more on the intellectual aspects of fitness, things like you know, researching new workouts or new training programs to meet your goals better, kind of reassessing your goals. A lot of people like to make New Year's resolutions that are related to health and fitness. So just doing the you know, intellectual side of that, your research, your thinking and prioritizing as you go into the new year. Especially if you're someone like myself who works out very intensely and regularly during the rest of the year, having that like one or two weeks either completely off or only training a little bit here and there can be a good thing for you. So remember that absence makes the heart grow fonder. So having some time away from your workout can actually make you more motivated to get back to it full effort when the holiday season ends and you resume your normal routine. Okay, and then in addition to that, on that note, as far as like rest and relaxation, I, a big source of holiday stress is actually the excessive traveling. That can take just as much a toll on your body and mind as your work routine, even more. I mean, sometimes when you travel a lot for the holidays, you feel like your vacation was more tiring than your actual work is. I have family in a lot of different European countries, so when we visit them. I mean, sometimes we feel like rock stars on tour with how many flights and road trips we have to take in a fairly short period of time. And actually that can make you end up replacing your holiday relaxation time with sleep deprivation and jet lag. So you may need to enforce some boundaries. Like what I do when I travel internationally is try to get all my relatives to meet in large family reunions so that I cut down on how much road tripping I have to do within the countries, like here and there, this city, that city. I try to just get them all into one place rather than uh, seeing them all individually. So see when you can reconcile your friends and relatives into one place so you 
minimize how much you need to travel around all over the place. And then also prioritize when you really need to travel for something versus when you don't. Like if you go to Disneyland with your kids on a regular basis, maybe you don't have to go again for Christmas if you already went several times through the year. Maybe you can contrast with something more low key. So one of the hardest parts of the holidays can actually be enforcing your own boundaries. Just remember, um, anyone who really loves you can understand and be respectful when you tell them that you just need a break, if that's your case. If you really crave to just do something low key and need to enforce some boundaries in that regard. So yeah, part of your fitness is not just your workout, it's not just your diet, but it's your overall lifestyle. I know anyone who wants to stay fit and healthy for the long run, you do need to have your own personal boundaries in all aspects of life and just know it's good for you. So keep that in mind for the holidays as well, because the whole point of holiday breaks is to really recharge, rejuvenate, so your work ethic is stronger as you get back into the full swing of things in the new year. Okay, and then my eighth and final tip for today is realize that this is a great problem to have. If your problem is that you're surrounded by so much delicious food and so many wonderful people over Christmas and New Year's, that's a great problem to have. Consider yourself blessed because many people have the opposite problem. They have not enough food to eat. So consider strongly donating some of your excess to a food bank or other charity, because that way it's a win-win. You solve two problems. You get rid of some of your own excess temptation and someone else can have a much needed meal. So consider donating some of your extra holiday food this year. All right, well, I hope you found all those tips helpful and insightful. Uh, let me know in the comments which tips you plan to use or which tips you have already used before. And yeah, let me know how it all goes. So happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Remember that hitting that subscribe button is much easier than resisting holiday food temptation. So. Dig in to both the food that you want and dig into my channel. <laughs> all right, well, again, happy holidays. I'll see you all soon.